Hey guys, I'm over here at this red tree farm. I'm gonna do a, a cleaning on it. Um, nice little one. Yeah, these. This is one of the better designs out there. It is. Ninety-seven. So it's been around a little while. Sixteen years. So let me take it apart and see. Doesn't look all that dirty, but I'm gonna take it apart and give it a good cleaning. Alright guys, first thing you always wanna do is shut the unit off if you're gonna be working on it. Let's pull the disconnect and put it on top. Right here you know it's not gonna run. And um could use a little hand driver, but I know it's better with something like this. A little magnet tray is always good. But I'm gonna pull this thing all apart, so it's a little easier with my little drill. It actually fits right inside my veto bag. And I got different size bits. What I need. If you put it in the magnet tray, you know you can put the magnet tray on the side anywhere, and you don't lose your screws. So good policy. There was a bee's nest in here. Look at it, them little bastards. I gotta kill them. Yellow jackets, not good. Let me get some spray for that. I seen them flying in there. Let me fix their ass. Get some of this right here. Wasp and hornet spray. Let's see how they like that. Faring too well. <laughs> Good to have that on a truck. Take this right off. Yeah, she's a little dirty in there. Didn't kill any of the stragglers. get bit by them babies. I've cleaned this thing in the past. It's not really all that dirty. This one's got, um, put a couple of T's on here. Got high-low pressure switch on a time delay, which will save the compressor if the um, condenser fan goes and uh, she'll shut off on high pressure and then it'll, it'll be a delay. Usually you like to set these around, you know, three, four minutes, three, three to five minutes of time delay. take the rest of this apart and we'll give it a good cleaning. Now on these units here, there's only a couple of screws that holds this stuff together. What I'll do is, um, I'll disconnect the wires for the fan and it's usually best to mark everything so you know what goes where if you're not familiar with it. And um, there's like three screws that whole top section will come out. And then I'll show you how to take the cage apart. It comes apart pretty easy, there's not really a lot to it and um, you'll be able to get good access to the whole coil. That's what we want. So these are the wires we want to work with right here. The brown, the black's always the common. I got my power off, obviously. The black's the common. The orange is the common for the capacitor. Okay. This orange right here. And then the brown is to the capacitor. Now, if one in doubt, there's always a schematic over there. You can go back and, and look at your stuff. But. So that's off. And according to this, there's only a couple of screws here. And this top will come right off. Good stuff. Good to have some of this in the truck in case you run across anything. Any kind of critters out there? I don't want to cooperate with you. They're all dead. I'm 
All right, just those two screws. And this whole thing lifts right out of here. And right inside there. Like I said, I cleaned this a couple of years ago, or last year, so it's not really all that dirty. But I want to take it apart completely and give it a good cleaning. Hit it with my coil gun over there. That's one of the best things you can get right there, is a coil gun. Put some foaming cleaner in there. You watch how nice this comes out. Right. And what I usually like to do is I take this one screw out right here. And I'll be able to just... Be able to move this whole box right out of the way. That one little screw right there. One or two. I think there's another one somewhere. Yeah, there's one right here on, on the back side. There's two screws. There's one right there. Hold it in. Oh, there's another one over here. There's three screws all together. The much smaller ones. There we go. Right, we're right out of the way. We can just move that right out of the way for now. Electrical. Let me grab that screw so I don't lose it on the two little stubbies. Oh. screw here which is another small one and a screw here and we got another one over here and we're all little short screws then you got some along the side here If I leave that right on there, the whole thing will come right off. Alright, I'm gonna leave all these screws along here. All I gotta do is some, there's some screws on the bottom I gotta take off. And this whole thing should slide right off of here. One shot, boom, come right off. Alright guys, there's two screws on the bottom here that I took off. Two on the front on the bottom, and two on this side on the bottom. And this whole thing should come right off. I got one more screw right here. I gotta take off. See this one? One more. The whole thing should just come right off. Put the camera down. There it is. Now you can also take this thing all apart with these screws and take that all apart, but there's really no need of it for me. I'll hit this with the hose and we'll clean it up good. And you can see I got some grass on the bottom and some stuff. Obviously, this is not a good place for the dry vent, but the dry is running on the side of this wall. And this is like a 12, 12 inch wall, but this really should be relocated. Uh, yeah, guys, just wanted to show you inside here where that dry vent is. If you can see uh, where the dry vent goes out, and you can see this this concrete wall, how big that is. That's like 18 inches or so going out through, and it goes all the way up to the ceiling there. So, um, see the way that concrete is like that. So. There's really no good area to run that vent out. You know, it's not good to be by the condensing unit, but that's the, that's really the only place for it. I guess I could cut these joists and somehow get it up there to that cell. It would be a bitch. Not easy. That's the deal there. That's why that vent is there. Comes up and boom, right out. You can see that wall. It's 
an old poured foundation. An old Portuguese had this house and he poured that foundation. That's probably like 18 inch foundation. Poured. All the way up. You'll see it there. Plus that, that's 4 inch block. So quite a bit. Deal there with the vent. You can see it's not the greatest. What I like to do with this is hit it with my brush first. And um, then I'll hit it with the coil gun. My little brush right here will get most of the big stuff off. You can see. You could almost clean it just with the brush. But it's good to have the coil cleaner. brush will get the you know the majority of the, the big stuff off of there. And we'll be doing good. units these backs really get dirty all the time for some reason I don't know why more so than everywhere else but they really do so I try to get it as clean as possible and I'll hit it with the cleaner the foaming cleaner you know it only makes sense to get the big stuff the big stuff out with the brush first and then hit it with the foaming cleaner. Got a big spider there. Doesn't want to cooperate. Alright guys, what I do is, um, I got this little jumper I made here to jump power out, so basically, just a little plug, and um, I got a couple of jumper ends on it, the white I put to the ground, and the black I put one into the, one of the hot legs that's coming, um, you know, from inside, so one of the, uh, it's basically 220 here, but you jump out one leg to ground, and that'll give you 110 temporarily to the plug here to run the vacuum, or a vacuum pump or whatever you need. Everybody should have a good wet back in their truck like this. You know, it helps you get right in there and pull all that stuff out. Alright guys, another thing too, if you get a little, a couple of spots that are damaged, you can just take your little, let me use this one, it works great. You can see that little spot, there's a little flat, this will straighten out the fence. Won't take much, man. You hit that with the vacuum or something, and you'll you'll bend them. <clears throat> the foaming cleaner is gonna really do a job on it. Help it out a lot.
You ain't never get it perfect, but you know, playing around here. Yeah, the best you can. Alright, I'm gonna hit it with a coil cleaner now. Well done with the vacuum. I'll put the vacuum away and move my stuff back so it don't get soaked. I'll probably hit this with the brush. And um, then with the hose. Maybe I'll hit this with the vacuum. See all this this stuff here? Vacuum all that stuff up. Oh, I'm here with the vacuum. Brush as it's good, good and bad, you know. Definitely helps. Woo. I hit it with the hose, the cleaner. I'll be good, man. Put a bag over the electric. All right, guys, this is the stuff I like to use right here. The blue, new Calgon cleaner. I got a yellow one that's out. It's pretty good too. They also got one that's um, like a brownish, like a dark brown. But this is the one I usually use right here. Heavy duty foam in action. This definitely does a good job. And all the shit I had was just sitting around in the garage too long. I'm gonna use this. This is better. This stuff's still good. Shit, this must have a shelf life to this stuff, you know? Alright, guys, I usually put my setting right on C there. I wanna see what she does. The stuff I had was more like syrup. That sit for a while. That work. I just hit it with the uh, with the hose. When you're done with this container, you want to rinse it out good with water. See all the foam and action happening there. It's always good to rinse this out. Leave that blue stuff in there. It'll get all schmaggy and it'll ruin everything. It almost crystallizes in there. All right, you just pop the just pop the head right off. There's a little swivel right there. And uh, hit it with the hose. Hit it both ways in and out. Mm, 
foam in action. That stuff really works good. Really better off, you know, squirting it from this side for us. So if there's any stuff in there, it blows it out. I'd be surprised how dirty these plates in the back get here. Yeah, my contact the humming. You want to rinse it good, get all that cleaner out of there. That's what I like to do. And it's a brand new coil. Be surprised a little bit of soap and water will do. Don't be surprised. Make sure you rinse it very good. Get all that cleaner out of there. Even though it's not acidic, still, you don't want to let it sit in there. I don't think it's a good thing. The only problem with this is, you know, you're going to have a lot of mud around here after you're done, so. Cleans up pretty nice. Not bad for a 16 year old unit. Would have been better up on snow legs, but just straight cooling. Don't have to worry about that here. It only runs basically, this only runs in the summertime for air conditioning. Good. Notice how I wrapped up my electrical there. That's it. Most looking good. Cover looks fine. That's it. No more soap coming out of there. Well rinsed. No more cleaner. And that's it. So we want to see right there. Don't get much better than that. That's the proper way to clean the condensing unit, right there. And that's the proper way. Can't get much better than that. Alright, 
can put this thing back together.